Have you been scrolling through many, many, many film podcasts thinking there's far too many of these? Or have you been thinking there's something missing? There's something we're not quite getting. A waffler from Northern England reviewing films, for example. Welcome to Ah, oh, review it yourself. No politics, no pandering, no point. Welcome everybody, welcome to Oh, Review It Yourself. Uh, I'm here today with, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, my brain's gone, Ryan from uh, Walk the Line podcast, that was fucking awkward. That was awkward. Good, 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 good start, start already, isn't it? Good start, isn't it? Oh, I'm God. back again, I'm back oh. again. <laughs> Oh, God, I wouldn't mind your names written at the top of my notes. I just didn't see it. Dear God, that's <laughs> embarrassing. Am I, the, am, I the, am I the second guest? Am I the second, first-time, second-time guest? Yes. Yeah. Yes, although, I don't, although I don't quite know what I'm doing. Like, I don't, I don't know whether I'm doing that wrong or putting people off, but no one's asked me on this yet. I tell a lie, they have. <laughs> they have. I've got, I think, film vloggers want me on. But apart from that, everybody else has been like, oh, yeah, we'll come back on yours. Oh, that's uh, that's all you want, mate. Who gives a shit about that? As long as you as long as you're getting people views, that's the main thing. So yes, first time, second, first time, second time guest, get in there. Happy with that. Walk the line podcast, guys. If you listen, go check it out. It's good fun. I'm liking it. But guy, but Sean, thanks for having us back on, mate. I appreciate that. It's all right, no problem at all. It's uh, I was first time we had our uh, first. We watched Die Hard. Reviewed that one. Um, Die Hard. I, yeah, I know. To be fair though, I'll start off controversially, even if it just. Hooks in a few listeners. I prefer this one. Just, just. Oh, oh. do you know what? Right, I was watching this because we'll do, guys. If you don't know what we're doing, we'll do Die Hard Two. Obviously, by the title that Sean is going to put out on this the thing, it's Die Hard Two. I watched the second one this afternoon, and I tell you what, oh, it's up there. I didn't think it was as good as I thought it was. I always thought that the Die Hard Two was like the shittest of the trilogy because we, we don't mention the fourth and the fifth one. Oh, we talk about the first three. See, I don't I mind the fourth the one. The fifth one's yeah. horrific. The fifth one's oh, horrific. The fifth one's shit. Fourth one's all right. But he's yeah. getting a bit on a bit. But that's when you realise that Bruce Willis is a bit of a bell end at that point. But when he's doing Die Hard 1, 2 and 3, he's, he's all right at that point, you know? Yeah. I mean, did, an yeah. did you see that? Oh, did you see that? I probably mentioned this on the Die Hard, and if I didn't, apologies. But if for the people who have just joined us, did you see the one show when he was on that? So the one show for no. anybody, list, anybody who's listening from around the world, uh, the one show is this quaint little British programme on BBC uh, One. It's on about BBC. tea time. Uh, on the BBC, uh, you know that big, massive corporation that hides up to, dodgy yeah, stuff? <laughs> <laughs> that Controversial. Uh, well, uh, he, he went on that and he was getting interviewed and he, he came out later and said he was jet-lagged. And not that I don't believe him, but he was just so like... If you'd have had him on as a podcast guest, you'd have been like, right, let's wrap this up. You'd have just, yeah, just, just given up. One, mate. Uh, so he's, he's just there like, yeah, you know, you go out, you do your shopping, you come home and it's a good day to die hard. And you can tell it. You think either you're taking the mick out of this, or you're like you <laughs> genuinely kidding. don't care. Like that's that's almost quote. That's almost a quote. Uh, oh, know, he's go, probably go doing it for it a out. payday. The reason, the reason why he's doing all these like dodgy crap films that go straight to DVD films is because because he's like he spent so much money because he's messy. His Demi Moore's probably rinsing them for all the like, alimony money and stuff like that. You know, he's well, he's made he's made some wrong decisions. The poor boy. Yeah. Okay. So we we join uh, John McLean. Um. It's the only film of the series, funnily enough, where John is LAPD, not NYPD. All the others, he's... Yeah, so yeah. he's LAPD in this one because he's moved to Los Angeles to be with his wife um, for, for, for now, anyway. And, Good old uh, John. John yeah. and his missus back together. Yeah. Bless them. Gets his mother-in-law's car towed. Uh, because Straight from the out, front. And tries to, pull some the st- tries to pull some strings to the other cop, like, come on. You know, yeah. cops together and the other guy's like, nah. Mugged him right off that day. He's like, no, <laughs> yeah. we don't care about your LA badge here, boy. This is yeah. Washington, yo. We yeah. don't care about your shit. I'm like, oh, wow. Well, animosity. Christ. Oh, yeah. Oh, they are the very... It happens later on when they're, when they're talking about uh, what do you think LA, what do you think, nah, LA badge? You're going to get your fucking free lunch or something. Like, there's so much swearing in this film as well. Like, I mean, is, almost there... to the point of unnecessariness. Like, it's not, don't get me wrong, it's not a Tarantino film, but if they came out later and said, oh, by the way, he had a hand in this, you wouldn't be surprised. There's so much swearing. Like, every was. night. I mean, not that, I, not that I, uh, I'm against that, but it's very, like, it's very noticeable. Like, in situations where you think, well, would you really need to talk? Would the top police chief, I don't know about you, but if I've ever met anybody in the top levels of things, they, they don't 
swear like that. <laughs> like they've got there by being very professional, very bureaucratic, yeah, exactly. etc. Um, what I was dying to get your, uh, not your, your, your opinion on, was yeah. the entrance of William Sadler's Colonel Stewart. Um, oh, what, what, what a scene! What a scene! Apparently, I mean, not been funny. How I think I, I just want to sit there. I want I want to get into the minds of the people writing this, directing it. So he goes right. We've got this bad guy. He's a turncoat. He's a he's naughty. He's a, a military guy. How will you get introduce him? Some guy probably sat down and went to them. Well, let's let's oil him up, oil him up, in his hotel room, and film him watching the t- watching himself on the TV while doing karate. <laughs> and it, 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 somebody must have already said that and went, it's a great idea. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it. Uh, well, I've got a little bit of um, a bit of trivia for that, actually. It was apparently director Rennie Harlan's idea. And he said it would be, right. um, quote, an effective but unusual way to introduce a character, end quote. And it's like, really? Like, I think apparently- it's, uh, it's not really an effective. It's a very homoerotic way to introduce oh, a character. Oh, very. I mean, apparently as well, this was that scene was filmed last. Because the it, the <laughs> idea the idea came in that late that William Sadler was like, well, if I'm going to do that, and that's going to be on you know celluloid for prosperity, posterity, yeah. posterity, posterity, posterity. I've just made up words. Posterity. Sorry, people. Uh, you go, you go, like he they filmed that last because he was like, right, I'm hitting the gym, and uh, you know you, <laughs> you can't knock the guy. I mean, he, he clearly hit think, the gym, but it's... I think that probably the funniest thing about that whole scene is when he's obviously he's doing his he's doing his kicks. And there's nothing. It's, it's a rear view. It's a rear view. You don't see any. You don't see any. Uh, no, no, no wellies flapping about everywhere. It's all tied up nicely. And then it's at the end when he's getting changed. The TV's on, and it's the way he turns to switch the TV off. It like, turns as if he's shooting someone. It just goes like that. With the and you're remote, like, oh, my yeah. God. With the remote, thinking he's shooting the TV, and he thinks yeah. he's a gangster for doing oh, it. He's he like, loves yeah. himself absolutely. And this is this is supposed to be a colonel in the army, like. Would you really? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, and then you've got that bit where that, that you're never seeing anything ever, of like a film. Then in a film, they all come out of the hotel rooms at exactly the same point and step into the corridor, in like s- synchronized. It's like someone from fucking Strictly Come Dancing. They all step out behind him. I'm not talking. I mean, concealed guns and terrorism aside, if you were a hotel employee and you saw that happening, you'd be getting on the phone. You'd be like, <laughs> it's I think right there's dodgy going on here. All these guns okay. coming out. But it's okay. They've got presents in their hand, so it's legit. <laughs> That's how they cover up the dodgeries. They've got presents, so they must be they must be nice yeah, guys. Seriously, though, Ryan, like the, the bit where they sat around the table, like how suspicious do you want to look? The sat there, like piece. the guy's He's got, got a piece, piece in, in <laughs> and it's, it's you know, and like um, the film is dying to remind us because it just loves to date itself. But like, honey, it's the nineties. Remember, Holly told me I should come into the nineties. Airphones, payphones, yeah, fax machines. Yeah, smoking in the whole in the in the airport. Um, <laughs> That's it. Not, How yeah. much smoking is in that bloody film? John McClane smokes a whole about twenty pack in the first five minutes. He's constantly smoking. Well, he actually says, doesn't he, when he's running for the runway at the end, he's like, "I got to yeah. give up smoking." Um, yeah, I got to smoke cigarettes. And but there's a great line, in, and this is another thing that I don't think the film gets enough credit for. That the dialogue's really snappy, like really punchy, like. The bit where he says, you know, as far as I'm concerned, progress peaked with frozen pizza. I think that sums his character up perfectly. Even in the <laughs> 90s, he was behind the times. It was. It was. I thought it was funny. I don't think I think it's it's the you can tell it's a 90s film, but it's like such a 90s film. Because you look at it, and yes, it's the, the airport is like a busy airport, but it's literally the busiest airport in the world. You think, and I'm just like, no airport is that busy. I don't care what week it is. But no airport is yeah. that busy. He was he couldn't even like walk through the corridor without bumping into people. I mean, that, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's Dulles. It's, yeah, it's Dulles, isn't it? Which is Washington DC. I think the busiest airport in oh, I don't know about the world. I watch a lot of air crash stuff. I think the busiest airport in the world is Fort Worth, not the world. The busiest airport in America is like Fort Worth, which is Dallas, I think. Like one that's right, right out in the middle of nowhere, it's huge. Dulles is pretty busy, but I think whether they overact it or not. They're like fighting ah, and yeah. elbowing each other in the face to get to the pay forms. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and what what is it? With, like, it's not the kind of 90s film that goes, it doesn't go like down the face, uh, the face off or the Con Air route. Uh, it's not that ridiculous. But nah. you've got like this trope that seemed to be in 90s films about this violent old woman on the plane. Like she's got, she, yeah. she, she meets with a zap, with a bloody, what's it called? The, the, the zapper, the, the, what's yeah, it, what's the, 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 the taser. 
the teaser yeah, thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sitting there watching this. I'm sitting there with the other half of the missus, and I was like, I tell you what, you won't be able to get away with that now. No. You know, I mean, but I should bring a teaser on the planes now. And she's sitting there going, hey, look at this. I'm you know like, what? Holy crap. Ryan, I've got a brilliant, uh, I've got a brilliant story. Uh, my my grandma, who oh God, she, she was born in, she was born just after the first world war. She passed away about well, about ten years ago now. Anyway, um, oh she God. just after. Oh, she was a character. Just after, um, I think it was maybe 2002, and my mom and my dad and my grandma were going to Turkey. And speaking right. of taking things on planes, this was only six, seven, eight months after 9-11. But not a long time at all. And the my grandma got on the, got on the plane and they took something off her in. <laughs> that was it. She tried to take like a screwdriver on, uh, like a multi-tool screwdriver thing. Um, and she took it, she took it off. Uh, they took it and said, you can't take this. You remember what it was, I mean, it's the same now, but you remember what it was like back then. It was sh- like everything oh, was bad. just, it was crazy. Um, understandable. And they took this and they put the tool, you know, like one of those boxes and said, oh, you can't do this. And she's going, jarping my, my dad with a finger. Derek, Derek, pick that back up. Pick that back up. And my mum's going, you can't, you can't have it. So anyway, she gets on, they check her bags, they all get on the plane. <laughs> um, First off, she moans about the tea. They give her a tea in a little mug. And she goes, what's that? That's not a cup of tea. I want a proper one. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> I don't know what's going on. She must be putting a bag in the overhead bin. Oh, my, my, uh, my dad's helping her with it or whatever. And <laughs> how old would she have been then? Early 80s, mid 80s, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know why she had <laughs> it in a bag. I'm sorry. You understand why I'm laughing in a minute. All of a sudden, the plane's filled with this noise. She took a rape alarm on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and it went off in a bag. Do you remember those magnet ones that you, you're pulling it? Like, they go oh, off, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're so loud. <laughs> Mum and Dad said, Mum and Dad said, you've, you've never seen an air stewardess shit herself. She was like, oh, I shit she, myself, oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd be like, God. nope. I'd be like, nope. Any parachutes, I'm having one. Not today. Yeah, I swear to God. The poor, sta- the poor staff on the... Um, the poor stuff on there. Um, I'll tell you what, one time I was, um, I was my, my plane kind of story sort of thing is when I, I went up to Scotland, this is years and years and years ago, so I live down in England now. So I went up to Scotland and when I came back, um, I got myself a bottle of Buckfast and it was all little half bottles. You get, I don't know if you guys know what Buckfast is. It's a very well-known tonic wine up in Scotland and basically adds to the reason why Scottish people are mental when they drink. This stuff is like fire water. It's awesome. I love it. Now, I didn't, you can't get it anywhere else apart from Scotland for some strange reason. I don't think anyone wants to stock this stuff I because just, of not that even reason. in the north. It's not even down here. I'm on ah, it's our nowhere, nowhere. So, uh, so I went, I was like, I want to go up to get some buck first. I want to get some. So I stuck it in. And then it's the time when you couldn't, I think it was 2009, 2010. So I was on the way back down to the airport. I got a bottle of buck first. I stuck it in my, my bag. Uh, not thinking that I had to put in my suitcase, I didn't check it in. And the guy was like, brought the, the, the customs guy brought it out and went, you can't take this with you. And I went, right, so what do I do? And I went, you've got two choices. You can either neck it or I'm going to pour it down the sink. And I just went, cool, give me two seconds. And I literally sat there with this bottle of fucking bog fast on his little bottle. I just went, glug, 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 glug. I said, I'm not letting this go to waste. I am down in this thing. Oh, I was pissed as fuck after that. <laughs> on the plane, passed out. Literally, as soon as I had that, I sat down in the play, I was like, gone. 50 minute flight, and I'm gone for the whole thing. I didn't even remember it. Mental, mate. Mental. And I, I, I was, I was, the thing is, I was supposed to drive from the airport back home, so I couldn't. I had to get the other half to do so. She's like, yeah, here's my keys. You could drive. And she's like, I've never driven your car before. I bet just she was like, go, just give it a go. I bet she was like, what have you done? What have you, <laughs> the hell did you do? Decisions were made. Decisions were made, Sean. I think I made the right one. <laughs> do you know what? It's one of those situations, isn't it? It's like, you know, if it was a bottle of Stella Artois, right, and you did, you just wanted to, it was, oh yeah, mate, been it. I'm not bothered. Yeah, it's something that you cannot get anywhere else. I've not, I've not heard of that. I'm, not, I'm, I'm yeah. the, for, you know, the north is for the very north of England. Um, well, it depends what you want to call the north, I suppose. But um, I've never heard of it, and I certainly would be the same if I was trying to smuggle a Parmo out, and they were like, no, nah, you mate, you can't take that. You can't take that to London. I'd be like. Can I eat, can I uh, get my garlic sauce out and eat it now? That that's the equivalent. <laughs> that's that's my equivalent, I think. That's uh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like the violent old woman, right? She's like she she all of a sudden, she, you know, you got Holly there being all um with her Nakatomi. Uh, so she's still working for Nakatomi. A little file. She's looking through all that, like trying to be really professional. And this violent old woman next to us, like you know, I used to carry mace, and she's like now I carry this this taser. Uh, now I zap any bastard that screws me. 
I tried to have my little dog. Poor thing limped for a week. And it, Holly looks back at her like, what the actual fuck? And I, I said, she, she did it. She did it to a dog. Why would you yeah. test it on a dog? That's ridiculous. At least test it on someone you don't like, not your dog. Her own, Jesus no, Christ. Not just a dog, Ryan. The her dog. dog. Her dog. Her <laughs> own dog. dog. I'm not condoning tasering at any dog, regardless of whether you want it. I know, oh, yeah. Like, it's just. Uh, it's just th- there you go. RSPCA, where, or whatever. Yeah, that's America, it. Whatever America is. That RSPCA, or, um, yeah. Is it Peter in America? I think it's Peter. Oh, um, no idea. So no I idea, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, so yeah. <laughs> we see McLean spots these soldiers looking suspicious and carrying a gun. Um, which I mean, I don't know if that's I mean, in this film, he carries one himself, so he's uh, always he's got, watching. John McLean's yeah. always watching, he's always switched, he's never switched off his policeman mode. He's well, always the, looking, always suspicious of everyone. Yeah. Well, all the co- well, I'm not surprised. The proper suspicious one guy sat there with the most obvious earpiece you've ever seen in your life, the other two guys <laughs> are sat there just like looking around, looking like they're fuming. And then they keep yeah. doing this really, it's supposed to be this subtle move. There's nothing subtle about kicking a package under your feet. Yeah, like, I know, right, yeah. Like, what's the point? I don't know. It's, it's just that bit's all weird. And then he goes he over to the... them. Yeah, well, he go, before that, he goes over to the cops, doesn't he, at the bar, and he's like, oh, excuse me, officers. And they turn around, and it's the guy, Vito, who's um, giving oh, him right, his, yeah. his ticket. And he's like, ticket. I think I saw something. He's like, so what? And he's like, Elvis... Elvis Presley and he like just walks yeah, off because really, and then because the cop's really. like and then the cop just because they need to keep the fuck counter up in the film he's like fucking tourists should be a rule <laughs> and you're like what like it's, it's like the script writer was like we haven't had an F word in this for a, for a uh, good not F bomb for a good yeah, three yeah. four minutes <laughs> get involved just stick one in um, the, there's a, quite an interesting little point about a last minute last minute replacement uh, the state of Colonel Stewart this last TV reporter Sam Corman I think um, WNTW News. Why do they always do that? She, <laughs> she, she spots this Colonel Stewart, but no one else recognizes him. McLean um, recognizes him, but then there's this whole thing about, oh well, I've been on TV. Um, yeah, I love that. He goes, how do I know you? Imagine bumping into somewhere, somewhere in the airport, and then it's like the busiest airport ever that you can walk through without bumping into people. And you're like, how do I know you? And you're like, I don't know. Mind your business, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, I don't. I don't know. How am I supposed to tell you that? I'm going to tell you my life story, John McLean. When you're naked. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, but like you said, he follows the guys uh, into this restricted area, and then they just they pull a gun out on him. But I love He's how like surprised shooting the shit at yeah, the place. Yeah. But I love how surprised he is. Like his face when they pull the gun on him. He's like, "What the?" He's like, "Oh, for Christ's sake!" But you can see he's like, "Oh, here we go again." Um, but going back to going back to um. What we're talking about about Bruce Willis, I think a lot of the, not the hate, but a lot of the idea around this film not being a great one. Um, but Bruce Willis has said in many interviews he's not happy with the film as it was too similar to the first one. There's too many references to the first one. Um, even oh, really? though this, the, even though this film in terms of box box office, I know it was different back then. Uh, but this this film did double what Die Hard did. Like it was oh, a really? big success. Oh, yeah, like right. it it absolutely blew the studio's projections and all that kind of thing. It wasn't. Mad as it is now, um, and then, but I would just like to point out this is the the guy who made a good day die hard, which is horrendous. I saw it once, yeah. and I think I threw away the DVD. I don't have it anymore. I don't want to watch it. I've watched it. I never uh, seen it, mate. No, I, I say this out of love for you. Go, I don't know. Go for a walk with your last. Go, <laughs> you know, go have a walk around anywhere for an hour. Don't, don't. It's one of those films where you go to someone. Please don't watch that film. And they go, yeah. oh, no, how, how bad can it be? And you're like, please don't let your curiosity get the better of you. Don't watch it because you'll just turn around and go, well, what a waste of my, what a waste of 90 odd minutes of my life that is. Main it's one just that. so stupid. Oh, it's just terrible. Like, there's one good bit in it. There's like, right at the beginning, there's like a, a car chase thing through Moscow. That's the only good bit in it. Decent action scene. After that, turn it off and go, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, just don't bother. <laughs> don't just don't bother. And, um, if- so, yes, yeah, they start shooting up the baggage area, don't they? And this is one thing I was watching, right? I'm watching this. And they're, they're not hanging about. They're shooting ran- frantically, just shooting it. I would be pissed off, right? Yeah. If I got my bag, where I'm going to go to, and it's covered in bullet holes. <laughs> I'm like, what the shit just happened to this? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like my bag's yeah. got, like, it's just covered in bullet holes. Well, I'm did you know? <laughs> you'd be fuming, wouldn't you? Did you notice the guy as well? So when he, McLean's fighting with one of them, 
and he grabs this aerosol can and sprays this shit all in, in this guy's face. Um, yeah. And the guy is stood, and these are <laughs> army rangers, right? Or whatever they're meant to be, Delta Forces, I don't know what it is. Especially soldiers, all this training. He aims this guy with a closed eye, which he seems to do for some strange reason. And he shoots the can out of his hand, and they're just like, shoot McLean in the face. <laughs> There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Uh, would have been a shot. Cinema. The power <laughs> of Bruce Willis is what happened. He is that much of a hero in this film. The bullet passed it, it changed trajectory because of an invisible force field around Bruce Willis at this point. Oh, right. That he must not die. I just wanna I just wanna veto before you strails into moving bullet territory. You've had enough conspiracy on your <laughs> podcast. I don't want it dragged onto mine. I don't, I don't want that stuff. <laughs> I am actually, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah, go back and uh, listen to. Uh, oh, is it is it your latest podcast episode? It's the latest one. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, episode ten, I think it is. Season three, episode ten. Um, season three. I, got interv- I inter- Yeah, I know season three. I've interviewed a uh, crazy son of a bitch who decided to go down the rabbit hole and talk about demons and conspiracy theories and DMT and all this sort of crazy stuff. So go watch it. Uh, go well, listen just, to it. I just, can't yeah. watch it because it's been banned on YouTube. YouTube banned <laughs> it. It was that much. You talk about COVID not being real. Ah, oh, set game over. Well, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, yeah, if that's not well, I think half my audience have just turned off to uh, to rush over <laughs> to rush over. But uh, yeah, no, I absolutely got, I I can't wait to keep listening to that. I've I've only watched a bit of it. I listened to a bit of it. Um, didn't manage to catch the YouTube version before it got uh, taken down. No. Um, the yeah, I know some of the some of the language in this as well. Um, you wouldn't get away with now. So the whole thing about the flying junkyards and the bimbos of the sky. And like the way, that, oh yeah, like he talks to like some of the way some people talk to him. You get um, so John McClane kills one of them, and then did you? I mean, what is it with these films? I don't think they do it in the later ones because obviously Bruce Willis is getting on, and it would have been really creepy. Yeah, um, really, really bad. <laughs> in this, like he gets hit on by like the woman, um, the woman behind the counter who's like, you know, I get off in an hour, who's clearly about fifteen years younger than him. I mean, yeah, he's about so 40 that. in this, isn't he? And she's about 25, 26. Yeah. So it's not like dodgy territory, but it's still a bit like, really? And he started to lose yeah, his hair at this point. Uh, you know, I mean... To but the one, th- the one, one thing that really kind of crazy about that is when he phoned up his mate to get the fingerprints. Now, this upsets me because he phones up and uh, he phones up his mate in LA. Was it the guy from the first film, isn't it? Al Powell, the the yeah. Al, Al Powell. Uh, Sergeant Pill, and it, it made me cringe. And he sits there, he phones him up, but he's like, Ah, oh, hi, partner, how you doing, best bud, old buddy, old pal, you're my hero. And you're like, Dude, get your tongue out of Bruce Willis's ass, you know what I mean? Stop, stop being cringy, you know what I mean? He's like, Hey, you got it, buddy, partner, you're my boy. You're like, oh, man, he, he fantasizes about him, man. I tell you, he's like, Oh, bleh. stop it, stop it, <laughs> Sergeant Pill, have a better self respect for yourself, mate. <laughs> come on, they went, through a lot. Ass. they went through a lot together, come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they did. They don't need to be that cringy. I mean, I mean, don't be funny. I've been through a lot of other mates, but I don't walk up and go, "You're my partner. You're my boy. Me, and you, mate. We, we, I to love be, you. Let's have to be, marry to, me." To be fair, though, if if, if we just started this podcast like that, it'd be a bit weird. Like, it would be hey, weird. You, like, hey. like, hi, buddy. Hi, partner. How you doing, get buddy old pal? You're my yeah, geezer. Uh, I miss you so much. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> um, there's a bit in it about uh, parceling guns that are invisible. Now the armorer of the film tried to get this taken out. He said there's no guns that are invisible, like invisible uh, metal detectors. And even if they made a gun out of parceling that was, the bullet would still set it off. So please don't yeah, put know, this yeah. in the film. And they were like, nah, it's in. It, it even talked about it afterwards saying, oh, I've tried to get rid of it. Um, McLean ends up in an argument with Carmine, who's like the... Uh, after he kills this guy, like, what, is he head of police at the captain, airport? Yeah, whatever? the captain of um, police, yeah. And there's some brilliant lines. I mean, hey, tell me something, Carmine. What set off the metal detectors first? The lead in your ass or the shit in your brains? And then... You shit doesn't people, let off. Shit is not metal. Loads of people miss out. <laughs> yeah, miss out. Like, he, he and he got, he's like, fat fuck. Like, he throws that in and you don't hear it. Um, everyone misses that bit out. Um, so, again, I mean, yeah. you, you couldn't get away with that now. Um, I, I don't know which. Um, and then the, the whole thing about wake up and smell the nineties, you and faxes. This this is the Al Powell bit. He's like you and faxes. This is a first. And then he's like, you're not pissing in somebody else's oh, no, yeah. are you? And he's like, yeah, and I'm fresh out of chlorine. And I'm like, oh, this dialogue's <laughs> starting to you know get a little bit cheddar here. Um, the uh, bromance, the bromance is real between yeah. Powell and John McLean right now. And, it, and he's just like, ouch! When I mean, you've got those feelings, insurance companies start to go bankrupt. 
Um, and then <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's it. You're like, chill yourself, pal. Get your tongue yeah. in his eyes. Come on. And then, and then, no, after we've had that absolute love fest, straight after that conversation finishes, <laughs> you get the woman who's just like, "Hey, I get off in an hour. Maybe we go get a drink." And he like, he's like smug. He's so smug, and he waggles. He puts his hand up, and I know you can't see me, but he wag the people listening. He put he puts his finger up, and he waggles his wedding ring in front of with this what my friend would call a shit-eating grin on his face, and he's like, just the yeah. facts, man, just the facts. And I'm like, really? Like, oh. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, fuck these guys. These terrorists can do what they want. I'm going to go and get laid. <laughs> fuck you. Just for it. I'm going to go and see you later. See you later. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, wifey. You're, you're done for him. I'm going to go and get myself some sex. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that door's shut. You uh, last can't hear Um <laughs> I know, yeah, she's probably coming through. She'll burst through but I go, what the hell are you saying about, man? What yeah. the fuck's going on with you? Sorry. I like you. With a glass. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. So he, br- <laughs> he brushes her off. Um, and then all the way through the film, the captain is just so hostile to McLean. Um, and then <laughs> the end of the end, John McLean just waltzes into the control tower. I mean, I assume he flashes his badge. But he's... He's dressed like shit all the way through as well, Bruce Willis. Like, even if he flashed a badge, you'd be like, no offence, mate, but, you, like, yeah. you look a right state. So he looks a right clip. And but it just say, shows you, but it just shows you the, 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 the shit security that was in airports in the 90s. That just shows you, that just proves that, that, yeah, the security was fucking horrendous back then. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't think it was that I mean, I don't, I'd like to think they weren't that bad. I think this film just exploits it for its own means, I think. Um... It, it, but it, they even say it like that right hand man who doesn't have a name says to Colonel Stewart and he's like what's the security and Colonel Stewart's like as we expected a joke and it's like yeah, <laughs> yeah when exactly. you have the first scene with the cops when they walk in and one of the guys is like mourning about the snow like I, could, I couldn't feel my feet for the last hour and they're like go and get a coffee and you're like these like really like and then but apparently there's a SWAT this, where's the SWAT team like, there's a SWAT team there as well that oh I don't know it's, weird um crazy and then there's because mclean gets into the control tower and tries to warn them look some some bad's happening here he's got the results back from powell uh, after their powwow and this guy's special forces he's, he's supposedly already dead they've been dead two years and the uh what's his name there's trudeau played by fred thompson from, from the law and order franchise and he's like um oh what the hell is his name the guy who's the police chief's like this don't mean shit uh, and he's like, "That's what I said about about my last cholesterol test." And then he says, "He says to McLean, what's going on?" The airport gets shut down. Uh, everyone's like, sat there like, "Oh, what's going on?" And then it's like, "If we don't get this sorted within the next two hours, the planes aren't going to circle. They'll be dropping on the White House lawn." Um, <laughs> some of the lines are just, I like it. I enjoyed this kind of, but I could see it would rub Jeez. a lot of people up the wrong way. A lot of cheese involved in these sort of like shenanigans. You know, when he's sitting there going, when he, when he was chatting away to them and saying, this guy's been dead for two years. I was just waiting for a dun, dun, dun. So I've got a sound effect on that. That would have made it. I'm like, yes, this film's awesome. Yeah. Well, it's got a lot of the, the music plays like a big part in it. Like it really emphasizes yeah. what's happening. Um, you get like the diehard sting every now and again. And so the, the the guys are trying to figure out in the tower what's going on. John McClane in this film as well keeps like shooting off and doing things with Marv in the janitor and with the, oh, what's the guy called? Oh, oh the, I can't remember. The guy gets shot in the arm. Oh, oh yeah, the, the technician guy, the guy who's yeah. like the expert at the tower, I can't remember his name. But he's cool. He's, his yeah. voice annoys me. He just sits there, just talks. You don't think it's his real voice. I swear that it looks as if he's been dubbed over by someone else. <laughs> Well, he's I'll chatting, you, and you're like, that is not you. Dude, that's yeah. not your voice, surely. I'll tell you who got dubbed over, though. John Leguizamo. Did you spot a young John Leguizamo in this film? No. And he only, he only has one. Like, his role got cut down massively. He only has one line in it because he taps a phone line or something. But he got dubbed. <laughs> God knows why. Well, this um, is the thing, right? This is this is what cracks me up about the whole film, right? Because they, they, they go into the church after this. You see the bad guys going at the church, don't they? Um, just after that scene, and they go down. And then obviously they kill the guy in the church. I mean, how why is that guy living in the church in the first place? The crazy son of a bitch. You don't live in a church, man. That's craziness. Things are coming at you. So then, but then <laughs> it, it, it zooms into it, then it cuts away, it comes back. And the guy is welding a few, uh, he's literally got a blowtorch and he's welding like it's like a fuse box or something like this. And it's got all these electrical wires and he's welding into it. And you're like, that can't be safe. <laughs> And then he's got then then all of a sudden they're digging a hole up and he's bloody 
he's got a chainsaw and a, and, and, and a power line. And I'm sorry, that can't be safe either. That's like no. the issue. That's an electrical power line. A big, about a foot round and he's chainsawing it with a metal chain. He's going to die. But that happens in the first one, doesn't it, as well? They, they chainsaw some wires. Um, the, the German yeah, guy, does, the yeah. big blonde German yeah. guy who gets ho 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 written on him. Um, yeah, it's a funny one. And then you get that. Oh, yeah, that because that's this. I don't know whether I've got a different copy because I didn't have that scene on my DVD. Did you know have it? I watched it. Uh, no, yeah, I watched it. Today. But I've seen that before because it's it's because yeah. I don't. I think the guy's some kind of janitor, isn't he? Because he says, "I kind of feel like a part of me is dying with this old church." And the guy's like, "Are well, you right <laughs> so, about yeah. that?" And shoots him. Goes, and then it has this really gratuitous, like. <laughs> Like shot of this guy, like old fella, dead, with like his slow arm motion. up and his arm just and like slow mo falls and his chest. And you're like, <laughs> is that necessary? Like this is a poor old. I religious think. Fella. I think. I think. I think it was the guy, right? It was the extra. He must have got paid like eighty quid or ninety or hundred pound for this. And he's like, right, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna put my own stamp on this. He went off script on that moment, and he went, we've not got enough time to cut it and do it again. So yeah, just keep it in. Yeah, but thir- uh, thirty-two years later, we're still talking about a death scene. So clearly. See. He's done his well. job. Uh, he probably still, get, probably still get to check some it now. And fair, if he's still alive, yeah. fair play to you. Um, I mean, 32 years. I mean, he's got to be getting on if he's still alive. Crazy. Let's not let's Just... not bring the mood down. Oh, let's not bring the mood oh. down. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. They go. So, that the, the technician guy works out, oh, I think they're going to go for this uh, Skywalk thing. Um this new part of the airport that they think they could patch into the planes and tell them that everything just yeah. shut down. And they go there. We see Robert Patrick just before Terminator 2 come out, so he was less known. And the the SWAT guys are walking down. These elite SWAT guys are walking on one of those escalator things, but the flat. And then the guy yeah. turns it off, and instead of continuing to walk, these elite SWAT guys are like, hey, Turn that thing back like, on. Yeah. And then he's How like, do you make me walk? Yeah. How do you make like, me walk yeah. that last four foot? And he's like, Switch and back he's on, like, son of a bitch. What do I look like to you? And he's like, a sitting duck. And he just pulls his head off. And it's like, I've got Whoa. a massive problem with this scene. I've got a huge problem with this scene. <laughs> right. I'm going to bring up my military here because I don't know if you guys know I'm ex military. And I'm going to, there's a few issues in this, this film I'm going to bring up later. There's another part, but this upset me because these guys are SWAT guys. They're obviously the, 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 we can have the best guys there. They're sitting there with M16s, assault rifles. But assault he says rifles, airport M16. police. So who are they? The airport police are SWAT. This is another thing. Must I be. They must. I don't know. They probably just did a, a firearms course somewhere and got a, a certification or something to make them walk about. <laughs> yeah, they, they got their badge like scouts. You know what I mean? Oh, I can do that. I shot someone. How, how many airports have sh- bloody SWAT teams in them? Really? Yeah, like, exactly. What kind of threat is this airport? Oh no, I tell yeah. a lie. Actually, no. It, it'll be because the. Think me easier. Oh, because this drug baron's about to land. I ah, yes, that's look at it. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Go on. Go so on, they've got sorry. M16. M16s are awesome. They're awesome. I love M16s. They're great uh, assault rifles. Assault rifles, five point five six millimeter ammo. They're great. You go into bloody uh, sorry, seven point six five. Actually, I should say that. I'm just um, being a knobhead now. Yeah, seven point six. But anyway, great technicalities. These guys are sitting there. There's three of them. There's a whole team squad. So there's about six or seven of these guys with M16s, and there's only literally four guys with MP5s. MP5s are great guns, but they're pea shooters, and they don't shoot further. And I'll probably say about 15 foot. They're close quarter guns, rifles, uh, uh, weapons. They don't, they don't go any further than about 15, 10 foot without going everywhere. And they're shooting them on automatic, and they're, they're just getting killed. I'm like, seriously, it's none of you guys actually looking to say, like, pop, 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 five shots, dead, done. It just upsets me. It upsets me. And one of the guys decided to fucking get a, a stoppage you know what I mean? And he's gone. And he, 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 oh, he got a stoppage, then he reloaded, and his gun still didn't work. And you're like, there you go. That, that's a bit more realistic. That's a bit more realistic. But well, do you, know why it's, do you know why it's realistic? It's because that was not scripted. He kept having... Oh, his it? gun kept jamming. So the part uh-huh. where the actor's fuming, I, it was supposed to jam anyway, but the part where the actor's like, oh, for, for God's sake, uh, he, he, apparently that, like, it, it kept happening to him. Because I know, spoilers, how have you not seen this anyway? Uh, the, the whole <laughs> blanks thing, but that was meant to be a re- they're all blanks because it's filmmaking. Uh, but that that kept happening to his guns. Apparently, that was like that's why he was so fuming. Uh, but ah, yeah, that whole yeah. bit. And uh, how long does it take him to run four feet? 
Like McLean and Colin. Yeah. <laughs> it takes them ages. It takes them about, about two seconds from to realise what's going on. Yeah. And he looks up and he goes, and you see him going, come on, come on, buddy. That's it. Get yourself going. You're supposed to be an elite soldier. You should be running this in literally one second. You could probably jump and get the gun and before John McLean does. He could have used his up. empty gun and thrown it at McLean's head. I just threw it. Just threw it at his head? Yeah, just launch like, it. <laughs> you know, it was, yeah, it was, it was just a bit bizarre. You get them. So... As a punishment for this infraction, uh, McLean turns up. He drops out of. This is the bit where he's the whole another basement, another elevator. Why do I keep doing that shitty American accent? Another basement, another elevator. How could the same shit happen to the same guy twice? And he drops out of the. He drops out of like this vent that they never seem to have screws in those vents. Who knows? He drops out of this and just shoots uh, Robert Patrick's cat, kills him, and kills a few other people. He he knocks that guy off that tall thing and crushes him. Brilliant. Oh, he got flattened. Yeah, he yeah. gets flattened, but that's a, <laughs> an obvious dummy. Oh, that's yeah, an yeah, obvious absolutely. dummy. And, and then the siege, the, the, the effects people decide to take a day off that day. Yeah, but later on, I mean, we'll <laughs> give that some respect later on. Excuse me. It's all right. Some respect later on. Um, and as a punishment for this infraction, uh, Colonel Stewart is like, right, we're going to crash a plane. And you know how you talk about, I mean, I'm not, I've never had anything to do with the aviation, uh, I've never worked for it or anything like that. But I've watched yeah. enough documentaries and read enough books to know that it doesn't matter if you set your sea level down. The plane still has like ground proximity warning systems and all these different... Yeah. It would not be allowed. It would not be able to pancake itself into the ground anyway. So he decides to the do that. The thing is as well, and as well, you can't use the excuse, oh, this happened in the 90s because nine times out of 10, the planes that are still flying about now have been about for about 30 years. Because oh, yeah. I was, when I was, in the, I was in the military, I was in the RAF, and we were still using planes that were made in 1970. Yeah, the, L, the, L10, oh. le, the L-1011, because that's in this film, I think. The U, yeah, yeah. I think the RAF still uses one as uh, oh, something, I can't remember. Um, the, the one that they use, the, the cargo plane that they're bringing back, the guy in there from, what's his face? That's a, um, that's a Hercules C-130. That's so doesn't, it have, doesn't it have two engines stuck on, though? Like, yeah, yeah well, engines, it's, got, it's, 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 it's got four. It's a propeller. It's a propeller. You can tell because it's got a fat Albert. It's a big, chunky thing. It's got propellers on it. And the older ones have got four propellers. But the newer ones, the Americans decided to design, have got six. Huh. That's cool. There you go. There you go. But, uh, yeah, interesting but also, another, another fun fact, this plane that they're actually flying to get in, we, we, we sold it. Lockheed Martin bought it. And they decided to do the business to it. Uh, and the Americans said to get hold of it. And they made it into an air, uh, basically a, a flying tank. They put bloody, you know, you see Call of Duty. You know, you play Call of Duty when you, you see the mission where you can, you're in the plane, you're bombing. That's from, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's from a C-130. And they just basically put guns, turrets everywhere all around yeah. about it. And they just went, yep, we're happy with that. And everyone just looked down and went, you guys, fucking mental. <laughs> you put a cargo plane, but made it into a flying tank. Yeah, yeah. That, isn't that the, oh, I might be wrong. Isn't that the plane they're using? Oh, what's it called? Not White House Down. The other one, Olympus has fallen. Don't they do that in that? That's it. It's that's the, it. Yeah, that's yeah, the exact yeah, plane. Yeah, that's the yeah, exact yeah. plane. You see, it just go do 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 do. Yeah. Do you know how they came up with that? I'll have to review that film. I do like the first one. Great do you film. know what they, they they decided when they said how could the White House be taken over? And some technical advisor was like, it was actually service or whatever he was, and he said basically it's ridiculous, but you'd need. This, 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 and this to happen at the same time, and they were like, oh, "Okay, yeah, we'll do that," because yeah. <laughs> um, it's ridiculous. But yeah, no, that, <laughs> is that the is that the plane that? Oh, it might be different, but I've seen a documentary where the it's a plane that shoots that many like the, the just the cartridges just fall in their hundreds like onto the ground. Yeah, um, won't surprise me. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, I, I, prob- I tell you, yeah. fun fact as well. Fun fact as well, you know, you see when you're in that plane, that C-130, um, I think, the, you know, you say brain surgery is hard. Um, I don't know, trying to bed a supermodel under the first date is probably hard as well. But it's not as hard as having a dump at a C-130 when it's 50,000 foot in the air and you're trying to go to the toilet because there is no toilet. Because what it is, it's literally a little thing that sticks out and it's a curtain, a curtain goes round and these guys are flying round and you're just sitting there. There's nothing to hold on to either. And if you fall out, you're falling out in front of everyone and you're there, kicks, kicks on your ankles and you're just like, hi guys, you know, everyone can see you. It's ridiculous. So the next time you try and go, go for a poo on an airplane, feel privileged. You're not doing it on a military aircraft because it's horrendous. Did, did you manage to, what is it like trying to crap while on top of a space hopper? Although that would be a, lot, be, a lot, be a lot messier, wouldn't it? It um, is. It is. It's mental. <laughs> that's a great image. Um, 
yeah, so uh, I, I did say though, so we end up, we see this, and here's another thing that I really enjoyed, and I, I don't know whether you did, but the fact that the the plate, like none of the um, actual aircraft companies, none of the airlines would allow their, like, would allow to be on this film about hijacking, no, this, that, and the other. Um, so you get, <laughs> like, you get Northeastern Airlines, which is like American, and then you get um, Windsor Air, which is a very, very, Windsor thin, Air. A very, very thinly veiled. Like, if this came out now, British Airways would be like, can we get our lawyers on this? Because yeah. that, that, Windsor Air, the Windsor British Air. guys, Windsor Air. You're like, and, uh, seriously? Yeah, the, the guys like, uh, uh, but she goes up, the, the air steward, another old woman, but this old woman's not evil, so she doesn't get to live. They go up to the old woman. I pissed myself she, at she this. I yeah, pissed myself at this. She goes up this. to the old woman and she's like, now, this is a really old reference and people won't get it. Um, the whole about, oh, don't worry, love. We're just like British Rail, love. We may be late, but we get you there. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> You're like, oh, no. They went it's there, like, didn't they? they went yeah. there. It's like, give me, and you get, you get, um, you get Colm Meany as the um, as the cat as the pilot as well, um, doing like a yeah, no, yeah 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 the most Irish man in the world yeah the Irishest playing... <laughs> man ever and he's playing a uh, typical British maybe, guy maybe or an English to, accent yeah maybe second to Brendan Gleeson and <laughs> you've got and you've got <laughs> you know, it's just so although Brendan Gleeson one of his major uh, roles was playing a Scottish yeah. guy in Braveheart and it's like what and he because he's thinking about Braveheart <laughs> that, yeah. right Braveheart he's Irish playing a Scotsman. And the guy who's Irish right. was actually Scottish playing an Irish guy, and then you get an Australian playing a Scottish. I mean, I mean, to be fair, is it... oh, let's not get into that. But Hollywood, I don't know. <laughs> Hollywood, Shawnee. That's what that is. I know. Why would you do that? Hollywood is why. Oh, that, that there's another film with just outrageous English stereotypes. Like, I hope you wiped your ass this morning. It's about to be kissed by a king, and you're like, oh, yeah, go fuck yourself. Like... You bad. Don't get me started on that. I'll talk about this. The cows. I'll paint my face blue and go fucking t- go to town right uh... now. I tell you. Um, I'll get all patriotic on your ass. Don't, because don't, because I'll get all historical and start ripping it bad, which is not going to be good for anyone. Um, I haven't no. got, I haven't got Scotland in my country list, and I, I don't think that would help. Um, there you go. If you want to get it, get get on the brave fight. People will listen to that. I've already reviewed it when I did my first, I did my first podcast with my friend. And we did ah. Braveheart because he'd never seen it before. He got to 30 years old and never seen Braveheart. And I was like, but you love Mel Gibson and you've never seen like, God damn him. Like, oh no, I really enjoyed it. And I was like, where, where have awesome. you been? Awesome. Um, yeah, straight. Anyway, so you yeah, get so that plane ends up crashing. And there's I like, it's really gratuitous as well. Like it, the model works unbelievable. But you even get a shot, like the pilot's like, oh, you even get you even get a shot of like the inside of the plane and it's rattling and the stuff coming out, and they're all screaming. Oh, yeah. You see the old woman, the old yeah. nice lady. She's <laughs> Not even enough to survive. She's screaming, <laughs> and you're like, "This is like, ri- like, oh, it's probably a bit bad much. It? It's, it's a bit yeah, much. Yeah, you're, you're um, like, and it blows up. It doesn't just, it doesn't just crash and goes to bits. It goes, yeah, it blows up to hell. And you know I mean, what? We're not talking a small explosion. That's you. Is that is that plane filled with C4? You know what I mean? I I'd be questioning what is in that cargo hold. It's, it's, un- <laughs> yeah. it's unbelievable. It's um- and oh my god, I've just realised, right? Logic, logic's kicked in. Aren't these planes all meant to be low on fuel? So what's exploding? What's <laughs> no, yes, exploding? What is, what is um, What are they carrying? Yeah, what, what are yeah. they carrying? Munitions um, or something? Are they yeah, carrying like just, a, an atomic bomb in the corner? I don't, the co- I, I don't know. Uh, but the model, the model work of the plane crash is unbelievable. Um, it was good. And that, like that whole sequence um, and everyone's reaction to it, like the way it's cut. I don't usually go into technical bits of film, but you know the way it's cut where you see all the characters' reactions, they're all like, oh my God, what's going on? Um, yeah. that was great um, but and there's another bit that I'd forgotten was in this talking about how it's a little bit like oh this is a bit emotional like it's not emotional but it's a little bit like near the knuckle you get John McLean yeah. walking through the flipping wreckage which looks really convincing by the way like because mm. a massive bit to the plane and, and then you get like guys on radios like there's no survivors no, and he walks through and fa- sees a little kid's doll on the floor that's like all burned oh. and you're like Seriously, die hard too. Like we don't want this kind of depth. Like this is it's a bit much. This is I don't know, this is the the biggest death toll in a die hard film by an absolute mile. Oh, that'd be and funny. He, they just killed like three hundred people in one yeah. go. So yeah, there you go. I think it, I think it's probably like the big that the biggest uh, kind of death toll in all four films combined. Yeah, to be probably. Quite honest. Yeah. Uh, thank you for saying there's only four, not five. And <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't recognize a fifth. We don't. Um, I ha- it's one of those situations where I half want them to come back with a sixth one just to try and make it 
just to try and redeem themselves, but they won't. So they can't. They shouldn't. They shouldn't flog it loss. That's it. It's done. It's yeah, dusted. Yeah, Game over. But they do. Can't do it they, they do, don't they? Um, it's yeah. So uh, yeah. So John McLean fans. I mean, I don't know if he's met, if he knows his wife's not on the plane or not. Can't work it out. Basically, she isn't. She's still up in the air. And he, the whole bit where he meets Marvin the janitor, um, and because they kick him out, but like no civilians. You're like, really? Like all the stuff he's done, and now you're going to kick him out? And he's yeah, I know, right? He's, no civilians. You're like, fuck you. Yeah. I don't about it. Go fuck yourself. And that guy's just a guy in a suit. I'd have like thrown my badge at him, and been like, please, badge. Like you know, LAPD. Don't mean shit. Like, See, John Mc, John McLean has been all over TV. He's been all that as he saved Nakatomi. He's not. He, he does not get the recognition he deserves. Sean, yeah. you, you're looking. Gone. What does he need to do? What does he need to do to get <laughs> in that elevator with all the big wigs? Another three Damn films. Him. Politics, <laughs> um, mate. Politics. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Bureaucracy. So yeah. <laughs> so he, he, um, <laughs> it's. I love the film, but when you you know what, it's one of these films that. As soon as you start to dissect it, you have a really good laugh when it all just falls to pieces in front of your eyes. I know, right? Um, yeah. he, he ends up out on the runway, and uh, because he this Marvin the Giant has found this radio that's not encoded, uh, he he pops up, shoots this drug baron leader who's been extradited to the US on charges, I which see, I yeah, think yeah, is yeah, based yeah. on real life, which makes sense. And he shoot, oh, no, he doesn't shoot him. He punches him in the face. He's like, ah, freedom, because the guy's meant to be <laughs> Spanish not and yet. talk Spanish, but He's got a really thick Italian accent, <laughs> as you do, uh, because it's the freedom. actor is Italian. But why didn't you just make him Italian? And Makes sense, you, uh, the, the country he's meant to be from, Valverde, that's the country in Commando from 1985. You know, the Arnold is it Schwarzenegger. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love um, that film. That's, that's one of my favourite films in the world. Yeah, I love I it. I think we had uh, two producers. Yeah, the same producer, I think. Have you, have, you, um, have, you, um, uh, have you reviewed that film yet? No, I haven't. You need oh, to review this film because yeah, I, I would so. if I if you want me back on I will review this film you because it is my favorite film in the world. It has got the best one liners by far in any film in the world. It does. You cannot you cannot knock a film with a bad guy is basically a cheap knockoff Freddie Mercury with a chainmail vest. That's the bad guy, and it's I'm just like, let off some steam, Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ali, you hero. Yeah, you said you, you said you'd kill me last. I lied. Just dropped yeah, it off the cliff. That's, that's right, Matrix. I did. I lied. <laughs> I literally. I have. Haven't... You, have you left anything for us? Just bodies. <laughs> <laughs> it's I love absolutely. It. I love it. Do you know what? Do you know what? As well. All right. I'll, I'll, we'll have to review that one. And I tell you what. I don't. I don't care how far, far in the future it is. But if we're going to review that one, if you love one line, is right. And I've saved this film because I knew there'd be a special moment for it. Batman and Robin, and he's one line, is in that. Oh, <laughs> that just Christ. exemplary. See what I just love it. That film's hilarious. Like it's just like what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. And you're like, <laughs> it's like somebody. It's like they had a bet. It's like two screenwriters, scriptwriters were like, here's like a thousand quid or a thousand dollars. How how ridiculous can we make this film? Uh, oh, it's it. Right. But I just great film to watch after after. The Commando. Uh, so Commando's next. Maybe yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so yeah, here's another, here's another bit, right? And maybe you Go can on. answer it. Maybe you can help me with this. So he ends up, he, uh, Stuart and all them, all his mates turn up. They save, they save this drug baron guy. Even though John, John's like, sit down and shoots him in the shoulder, as you do. Um, I, I don't know if that's justifiable. Oh no, no, he has a gun. He tries to shoot the plane. Fair enough. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. He's like supposed to stay in your seat until the plane reaches the terminal, which was one of the phrases on Die Hard trilogy. I played that game as a kid. PS yeah, One yeah, yeah. loved it, and then he ends up in the cockpit and they try and give him this military funeral and shoot the hell out of it. And Blow him up. then they throw like nine grenades in there. But here's my question: Do they only pull? No, they don't. Because you see them all pull the pins. How long is the discharge on the fuses on those grenades? <laughs> How long is the fuse? I always say that. So I was watching that. I've gone, out of it. We must be like two minutes into this yeah. now. So he's got time to jump, realize the grenades in front of him, get up, go into the seat, buckle himself in, and then that happens. And I want to get into that as well. Right? This is something else that really pissed me off. Is it the ejector seat? The fact it's on the ground. It is. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. don't have an ejector seat in these planes. I'm sorry, these aircraft do not have ejector seats. Why would they have an ejector seat? In a cargo plane like this, they've got it in fighter jets and all that sort of stuff, you know, yeah. Top Gun, like, you know, like the, the Eurofighter M6, all them sort of things, F 16s. But the thing is, the ejector, the top part comes off, so you eject out. 
what's going to come up above you? There's like a whole fuselage above you. So if you get an ejector seat, you're going to smash into the top <laughs> and you're going to kill yourself. You're just going to go dunk. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the sound of a jackass or something. You're just going to go, yeah. nope. There's no such thing as an ejector seat in this fucking fucking plane. I'm like, oh. And even if it was, even if it was, and not to get serious for a minute, but most planes that have ejector seats, you are not, they're not made to be pulled on the ground because there no. was a there was a red arm. Uh, there was a just to get serious for for a second, people. Part, We're going technical, um, you guys. Yeah, technical. There was a there was a, a pilot killed for the red arrows because I, there was some kind of malfunction in his his ejector seat went off and he was That's right, really yeah. sadly killed. So it, it, that technically that doesn't make sense either because I mean, and also I mean, is the explosion knock him higher? Because how high in the air does he go? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a really cool shot. How high does cool. he go? You can see that the, the VFX were starting to the nineties VFX at that point were like, oh, that's holy hashtag holy green screen Batman. You know what I mean? I that was, was some no, I think it was blue. I think there. it was blue screen then. But it'll it have been like blue screen back then. Yeah, it? yeah. I think so. Not I'm not sure. The green screen yet. But yeah, it was blatantly obviously not real because if you could do that in real life, you'd be dead. But yeah, and then he just kind of goes up because he does go really high in the air. I mean, he's, he's got about two hundred foot in the air, and then yeah. he's got enough time to kind of parachute down away <laughs> from everyone else. Yeah, miles away, yeah. Him, and they're going, you got lucky bastard. I'm yeah. like, drive over there and shoot him. Yeah. He's literally probably a couple of feet away, mate. No, oh, he's miles away. Or put your gun in the air and shoot the parachute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's it. That, I mean, that would have, I mean, that would, yeah, that would have been pretty graphic. But uh, well, they've yeah. only got MP5. They've only got MP5s. It's ridiculous. There's no reason for that. And when they're shooting these MP5s as well, the, the, the muzzle flash is like twice the size of their fucking weapons or guns. It just doesn't happen. So I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. The guy must have went to town. He must have had a budget. The VFX guy, right? he must have had a budget and made it too much on the wrong things. He probably <laughs> went for it. I'm going to make these muzzle flashes huge, but then I'm going to make this really crap shit scenario where he shoots himself in the sky and just put, make the fire look really crap. I'm like, oh, dad, come on. You're, you're... VFX artists, sort out. Yeah, I think I think it's because it I think it's a combination of, of like model and and it, I see I don't know I actually think I think the the explosion of that plane oh no I tell a lie I I reckon the bit where he flies in the air I reckon what's beneath him that he's blue screened onto I think yeah. that's a model but the part where the plane is meant to explode you get that front shot and I noticed this that was it good really stands out the front shot of the plane just as it explodes and that's like faked in because they clearly didn't yeah, blow yeah, up yeah. that plane uh, because. Not. There was no ejector seat. I don't know, whatever. Uh, it was just, uh, yeah, it was just. Although that is quite an iconic moment. If you if you ask people about this film, that's probably what they'd remember. Yeah. And that and John McClane. See, I don't think this film gets enough love for its just random killings. That sounds odd. Uh, killing a guy with an icicle, like. like oh cold, man! Yeah, because he goes back in and he they find out where the guy is, didn't he? The is they find out yeah. where the church is, and obviously these. Well, only McClane, they, they, though. Only McLean and the uh, the technician oh, yeah. guy. Don't tell was just yeah, because it, but you got these special forces guy that rock up, isn't it? And he's just like, uh, and when he rocks up, you just, I just, I hate special forces people in films because their uniforms just look, uh, they just look so unrealistic. It's ridiculous. And he's, they're introducing themselves to everyone, and the guy's going, "Oh yeah, I'm this, that, there." And he goes to the police chief. He's like, oh, "Anything you want, I got it." And he goes, "Who are you?" He goes, "I'm John McLean." <laughs> he's like, "Everyone else has got ah." Aviation specialist. Like, who are you, John McLean? Oh, I know who you are. I love what he did in Nakatomi. Blah, blah, blah. He's a baddie. He's a naughty guy. He's always a naughty guy, that guy who plays the... the, the Isn't the is he in Commando? No, he's not in Commando, is he? He's in, uh, nah, he's not in Commando, he's no. He's in he's in another action film, though. I can't... Remember. I know, he's been in loads of stuff, but everything he's yeah. in, he's always, a, he's always a naughty guy. As soon as he rocked up, I went, ooh, he's a naughty guy. I can tell straight away. He always plays naughty guys. Yeah, because he, say, he says to McLean, he's like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just your kind of asshole. That's what he says to him. There and um, it's when as well as well when he rocks up and McLean's chatting to the guys, the army guys, and there's a guy sitting there twiddling some knobs and all that sort of stuff. And he walks up and he tells him his life story. Oh, yeah, literally. When the, he just walks up, he goes, Hey, how have you done it yet? No, but guess what? I've only been here for about two weeks, but this guy's really good. I've been blah, blah, blah. and it's like, I mean, if I was John McLean, I'd be like, I don't give a shit, mate. I just ask you if you were doing your job, all right? I don't care about you. He's that and specific, like, foreshadowing. Yeah. Yeah. That then specific. you realize why, yeah. Well, it goes back to the replacement thing, doesn't it? That we, yeah. defer, uh, but. He's that specific. He's like, yeah, the other guy got appendicitis. I can't give a shit. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, all right. Look, I, I just kept. I, 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 like, I was, I was waiting for Bruce Willis. He said, comes out with that big montage spiel thing as <laughs> anecdote. I'd be waiting for Bruce Willis to go. Yeah, cool story, bro. Tell me another. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Just be like, no, I came over to ask you about that radio thing you meant to be twiddling and tuning and I don't know. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, it's just, um, and then so it turns out, oh, they have this fake. I mean, I don't know if I realized the first time it's been that long since I watched it for the first time, but surely the people watching it for the first time must have thought, why? And this will annoy you, I know it will, it's coming. Go on. The bit about why do they have these like double ended, and I know why they've got it. They've got these double ended. Why? Why are they in really bright blue and red tape? Like, what's the crack with that? Like, surely people noticed about the whole blanks thing. Um, cause yeah, but this, it's like, just a, it's just a differential. It's an easy sort of differential away from it. I can understand why they did it, so they know what one switch. Uh, at a glance, you don't need to look at them. You can just look at the tape. It's easy. It's a good job they didn't get it wrong. No. <laughs> can you imagine? Uh, I know. Yeah, they were like, "Oh shit, wrong ones." What red, red, red are the blanks, aren't they? No. Oh, no. Fuck. Like, oh god um because they get they have like a sharp snowmobile chase um and mclean's like what the hell i had that guy in my sights and again mclean like <laughs> this jet ski the trash this jet ski blows up in midair and mclean like rolls softly he's, yep, in the yep, snow he's fine like no broken bones pretends to be dead <laughs> guys think he's dead do you not want to go over and check mate you know yeah. he's only a couple of feet away just walk over and you'll see him standing up going i'm okay and then shoot him <laughs> you've won but nope, they're like, I'm going to trust that big explosion that he's dead. Oh, come on, guys. You <laughs> suck at bad guys. You suck at bad guys. Did you, did you pass bad guy college? I don't think you did. Oh, bad guy college. Um, so, yeah, so the killer replacement guy gets his neck slit open. Um, cause the, that was uh, pretty, can I just say that was pretty brutal, though? That pretty was pretty brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a nice yeah. guy, that young kid. He's like, yeah, I guess I'm too scared to do this. And I was like, you son of a bitch. And he slays his throat. And it was like, oh, my God, that's really bad. They're, they're about to have this fake fight and get on the... They could have just knocked him out and left him by the side of the road somewhere. Yeah, they kill him? I'll do something. Yeah, don't need to kill him at all. And Bastards. why... Here's another thing. Why do the special forces turn up in camouflage gear in the middle of winter and then swap <laughs> in like, winter stuff later? And they just put like an over. I said that to I was watching this. They just swap, they, they got changed really quick. Then you yeah. realize it's just like an oversuit. They just put like yeah. an oversuit on and white balaclavas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, for that yeah. egg, just for that extra, extra, that extra bit of camouflage. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that, yeah, it's just <laughs> what's the crack when they're all just before they kill the guy, the new kid. They're all sat in there, they're all sat there like having this laughing joke about Grenada, like where they've been, and they're all passing out like this chewy as if that's like a character. As if that's like, oh, here you go. As if that's like a character trait. I don't know what, what the idea yeah, is with that. No idea. It's just very strange. Um, very strange. And then you get, again, another woman throws herself at, at John McClane. He realises they're all on the same side. Here's another thing, right? He, he fires the blanks at Carmine in the middle of what's essentially the airport's police station. And you have about <laughs> you have about 15 cops stood around and the cops just hold the guns up. Like, I'm not being funny, mate. Like, if you do that in America and you fire a machine gun, at a police chief, I'm pretty sure someone's going to take a pot shot at you. They're not. How did you get the gun in the other first place? How did you get the gun in the other first place? No, he just rolls in. He rolls in with Marvin on the on that like buggy thing, the golf buggy yeah, guy thing, doesn't he? Golf He's like, yeah, make he just, way. Yeah, he just, he just, how did he get that? How did he get that? Is that like? Did he go up the stairs in this buggy thing? Is it like a know. buggy elevator? He just gets out, just bowls in. You're like, what's what? up, bruv? What an entrance, though. But this is this is like an airport. This is an airport on high level of like terrorism, right? Then you get a janitor, or supposedly a janitor, and like John McLean, who's dressed like an air, like flying through a lot of people. You could have easily have had a pod shot at him, thinking it was some kind of attack. Oh, it's, yeah. um, but forget the logic. Just uh, Sam Coleman, this newswoman, he goes up to her, and he's like, "Look, uh, I need your help." He commandeers the helicopter, and she's like. God, you give me this story and I'll have your babies. And he's like, <laughs> that's, that's the kind of yeah. And he's like, not the kind of ride I'm looking for. <laughs> but we've we met the one thing we didn't talk about is the guy in the plane with his missies and he sees the guy from the first one. Oh, and so, when yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, he was being he was being a dickhead, wasn't he? And he was being like, Do you know who I am? And he looks over at the look of sheer death of in his face, and he's just like, yeah, I'm not allowed to be in this woman. I, it was like, I just knocked him out. I broke two of his teeth. And you're like, what? But he's oh, been a yeah. great swat in there, wasn't he? Yeah, I skipped my notes. So earlier on when they're talking about flying junkyards and bimbos of the sky, these are programs that he's made, very objective, yeah. of course. And he says, you cannot put me near that woman. Uh, she assaulted me, and she humili made, humiliated me in public. And then the uh, she was like, <laughs> walks over, and he's like, what did you do? And she's like, knocked out two of his teeth. She's like, would you like champagne? some champagne? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd be like, I was waiting for him to go, do you want to get any first? Well, no, I want to go to first class, mate, because not be funny. If that, if you look at the film, if that's coach or whatever you call it, that's just standard class, that's some good seating good on yeah. you, mate, to be honest. 
that cannot be standard. He's gone, oh, put me in coach with the rest of the cattle. And I'm like, dude, I'd be happy with that. Like, have, you, look at like, have you ever flown? Have you ever flown with some of these budget airlines? Really? Like, you think that's <laughs> I know, yeah. We, you know, you get you get earphones and all that. You've got plane phones and shit, yeah. you know? It's like, what the hell? Oh, it's just, yeah, it's just like, it's like, oh, you were sorted him. Have some champagne. Would you like some more? Um, <laughs> no, I want to get it. I want to see what first class is all about. Yeah, I've got a yeah. feeling that's going to be off the chain. That's going to be like some sort of like Dubai five star hotel up there. Oh. I want to go with that. What do they? What do they give you in that first class if you've assaulted somebody? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, what do I? What do I need to do to get myself up there? <laughs> One thing that cracked me up, right, is we're going to go go back. Remember when the terrorists took over, and they obviously they cut all the lights off in the runways and all oh, that yeah. sort of stuff. And the guy goes on the microphone. He's on there. The the the, the technician guy. He's just like number two. Goes on the microphone and he goes like and he he he's announces to everyone we are now at a code yellow. And I'm going code yellow. Yeah, the yeah. lights are out. What what do, what happens for code red? Yeah. What would yeah, happen? Yeah. Why does it? Why is, that's that's. That's code red, mate. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You've got no <laughs> runway. You, that, what the hell did somebody need to do to go code red? And then the next thing it goes, oh, we've not getting the instruments. No, we're code red. Oh, there you go. Now you do that. It's been code red all along, mate. Come on. I know. It's, oh, Barnes, that's his name. Barnes, that's oh, the guy's name. Yeah. Because he's like, we are in a code yellow. And it's like, all right. But he shouted it, and all the people have sat behind him. Like, you didn't need to get on that channel. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, just turn around and <laughs> It's like the room is literally like I don't know, but like I don't know, but ten foot squared, and he's got big tannoy. <laughs> yeah. Just to a Well, you, dude, I'm just sitting right here. I, I, yeah. I, I can hear you. I would have loved to like a little aside. Just got like, just one of these air traffic controllers in the corner who just had a coffee. Just like for fuck's sake, I just would have loved that. <laughs> I was supposed to. I fucking swapped this shift with Ryan. I can't be off. For God's sake. Yeah, no. He's uh, on. He's on this. He's on this again. For fuck's sake. He's on. He's, he's always with his tannoy. He's got his new toy. He's using yeah, tannoy. You'd, you'd be there like I bet. Best get my spare pens out. There's gonna be a lot of paperwork <laughs> after this one. That's a, it's been a long um, day. So yeah. So shooting back to it, uh, McLean chases the uh, play down, jumps onto the wing, and I, I do like in classic '90s style. They actually address how ridiculous it is. He's like, John, what the fuck are you doing out on the wing of this plane? Um, <laughs> and although it's not it's not as crazy as the whole F or oh, is it the F what plane is it in the fourth one? Oh, F- it looks like a Harrier it, yeah it's, it's the hover it hovers it's like a Harrier yeah, yeah. it's probably the American version of the Harrier it's like yeah. an amalgamation isn't it uh, and he ends up on that it's not, as, it's not as crazy as that it's not as kind of bald Terminator as that um, I read that in a review once that, that John McClane in the fourth one just became like a bald Terminator and it, it, <laughs> stuck, in, true, it yeah. stuck in my head yeah um, and he ends up having a fight with Grant on, out on the plane. He kicks him at the engine. And these engines that are, get destroyed by, you know, a Canadian goose. Nah, John Amos flying into it doesn't even bother it. Bit of blood comes out <laughs> back. It still works. Nope. The, the pilot, drug baron guy, just looks out of his window, even though you can't see the engines. I don't no, know you can't. I, you can't see the engines in those planes from that angle. Anyway, uh, it's just it's a bit weird. He, like, looks then, the ga- then it's the, the, the penultimate fight. Sure, this is it. Yeah. The man's coming out. Oh, Stuart comes out with his karate stance. I think he would have been a bit more effective if he got out there. If he if he went out there bare chested, I would have believed it. <laughs> and I, mean, I wanted just to get bare chested out. I'm like, yeah, he's even oiled himself up prior. He's like, ah, McLean's probably sitting there doing the business. His mates are in there going, Are you gonna fight this guy? Yeah, give me two seconds. I'm, yeah. I'm oiling myself up. It's not effective. I have to be slippy. I have to look, I have to shine, you know. I know. It's Slip just my like, hair back, oil myself it's, up. It's the ho- here's another thing. Here's another thing, right. I've just thought, and I don't know why it's never occurred to me before. They could have just took off. But what's McLean going to do? What's he going to do? Long, it's the, the longest slide. runway. It's the longest runway in the world. It's the longest taxi. Oh, yeah, He's taxiing yeah, yeah. out. He's got like six miles just to take off. Like, come on, on, an, on an airport where all the runways are clear. And by the way, <laughs> another thing, right? Those those runways are so clogged with ice and snow. There's no way you could land on them anywhere. Yeah. Like at the end no, when they're landing, they're like snows flying up in the air. I'm like, really? Like <laughs> oh, ridiculous, it? It, it, I mean I love it, but it's just like ridiculous. But, but um, he gets the feel out, he gets the feel out, doesn't he? He, he? he kicks the shit out of that guy. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. He kicks the hell out of McLean, doesn't he? With his yeah, he kicks stuff. the shit out. And he's, it's just when he does it's when he does the karate stance, you're just like, Oh, it's about to go down. Yeah, yeah. He's Time to shame, gangster. Go on. But McLean doesn't do any... Um, and the reason why he probably wasn't shirtless is because they filmed that scene at the beginning last. So he might have, you know, still had a bit uh, of a beer going on. Still um, had a bit of a, bit of a belly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, he ends up fighting with him. 
And I was disappointed there was no, like in the fourth one, when he fights, I can't, is it Maggie Q? He fights Maggie Q and she karate kicks him. Um, and he's like, what's all this Kung Fu shit? And he doesn't say anything. I'm like, that's a missed opportunity right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's doing some spin kicks. He's, although, he's proper belting them. Oh, yeah. Although, there's a great line in it before that where Grant's like, too bad, McLean. I kind of lied to you. And then just before he kicks him at the engine, he's like, I got enough friends. He just boots him right in the face. <laughs> that's um, crazy. <laughs> I've got enough friends. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, um, oh that, that's straight for the jugular, John McLean. Yeah, Don't yeah. do it that. Oh. <laughs> and then, just a bit of oh, put yeah, him into an engine. He's got love only for Al Powell. Any other man, he's not interested. He's not interested. Yeah, that's um, it. You know, Al Powell. I've already got. I've already got a black got friend. I don't need you anymore. I've got one friend. Um, that, that Colonel Stewart um stabs him in the shoulder. The biggest knife you've ever seen in your life. Um, and then John proceeds to bite half his hand off and spit it at him. And I was like, whoa! I'd forgotten that bit. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh, he, he's he's playing dirty. Old John McLean's being dirty. Old old matey boy's doing a proper fight. You know, he's doing some yeah. kung fu shit. Um, he's doing some spinny kicks, and McLean went eat oh, there. Lost respect for McLean that time. Don't bite somebody's hand. I off. tell you what, though. I tell you what, um, McLean. How do I put this so it doesn't sound really rude? McLean's clearly rubbed off on this Colonel Stewart because that sounded bad anyway. Because uh, Colonel Stewart throws in a bit of a quip of his own when he kicks McLean off the plane, as McLean like pulls this fuel jump thing yeah. that would never be there anyway, but never mind. I have no idea. Um, it, he, he goes like, happy landings, asshole, and kicks him off, off the plane. <laughs> uh, so he's quipping as well. John like rolls along, um, and he drops, even though the type of aviation fuel wouldn't work, but don't, don't worry about it. He drops don't the lighter in, he's like, yip guy, motherfucker, drops the lighter in. The, the, the flames chase the plane off the runway, and then like catch the engine and blow up. Um, and then the other planes are like, oh, we could we could go and land. Like, how do those planes yeah, not land each other? Yeah, it's yeah. all a bit. <laughs> we can um, land now. The thing is, they're landing like one after each other. There's not even any gap between it. That is not safe. Yeah. You oh, know I what I mean? Got... On ice, on ice. Yeah. And there's literally, I know, about about 100 feet apart between the two planes. Yeah. And you're like, dude, a little bit close there, buddy. Um, <laughs> um, the model work in the film is outstanding, I think. And uh, to be fair, though, um, we've missed, well, I've missed out the bit about, um, so the, the oh, what's his name? Thornburg, the reporter guy from the first one, him and his mate have brought this like radio thing, so they find out what's going on. Um, and he, he's, he's doing, this? yeah, he's doing this report, and he's like, "If this might be my last broadcast," and he's been all, you know, he's live on there, and they're, <laughs> they've stolen, Tased. The, they've stolen the way, yeah, they taser him. Like the air stewardess is like, "Yeah, I'll just open the toilet so you can taser him." I like, "There's going to be some serious lawsuits going on after this film." Like, he looks. Dead though. He's sitting there with his eyes wide open. He looks yeah. dead. I'm yeah, like, dude, then, you just killed that guy. Then he ends up off the plane. And this is another bit like the evil woman, right? He ends up <laughs> off the plane and he's like, oh dear, help me up. And the old woman's just like, asshole. Like, <laughs> just walks off. The, guy, the guy's literally just been, he's been tased. He's probably pooed himself. He's peed himself. And he's just like, can you help me, please? No. I mean, he's a bit, I mean, he is a bit of a sleaze. And, you know, he, he, he's trying to, you know, he's frightened everyone and caused a big riot in the airport. But, I mean, I don't know if he deserves half this stuff. Um, I was waiting for I was waiting for the woman to get the taser and tase him again. Yeah, fuck you, bastard. <laughs> have some of that. I don't, what would another taser have done for him? He was already flat out on his back. And I look, this is another <laughs> thing, right? He's flat on his get back. There? Yeah, he's flat. Yeah, exactly. He's flat on his back, miles away from the shoot that they got on emergency escape. And John McLean comes back through this crowd of all these medics and firefighters. And no one, he's walking, he can barely move one of his arms, he's been stabbed in the shoulder, and no one's like, Yeah, and he's got blood right. all over his yeah. face. He's no one's like, it. mate, you are right. <laughs> he gives a shit. <laughs> and he's screaming, Holly! Yeah. And you're like, dude, he needs help. And it yeah. wasn't, it's not until his missus comes along, they put a, they put a blanket around him. You're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, now, you, now you give a shit. But then they leg it, they don't go, oh, you need to come over here. Yeah, no, yeah. they just chuck a blanket, he's fine. He's warm now. Let's go out <laughs> and see someone else. <laughs> um, and then Carmine pulls up, and rips up McLean's parking ticket. What the hell? It's Christmas. And it's like, oh, you had to get Christmas in there, didn't you? Yeah, um, I know, yeah. And then there's the whole let it snow starts. And you get, to be fair, I quite like the way they look in films. I know that you can tell what they are, but there's a beautiful matte painting at the end of the planes all landing. And I like matte paintings in films. Um, yeah. You can keep your CGI. And I just I just put, man, what a film. Like, I really enjoyed this. Like, I don't know about you, Good but film. I watched it, and I just, I don't understand why it gets so much like it gets if you if you drew up like sequels it probably wouldn't be particularly at the top but i don't the villains you know he's not Alan Rick, but 
Nah, nah. But it's, it's a decent film. It's got a good plot to it. It's got it's a little bit far fetched. It's a cheesy kind of eighties, nineties film. You know, it's it's it it was there to do uh, do something. You know, but I think they did it well. To be fair, good action scenes, good sort of good dialogue. Towards the end, the dialogue got a little bit crap, uh, crap, crap. But uh, at the end of it, it still it was good enough. I mean, I mean, it's it it it's like an action paint by numbers action film, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, but it was. I enjoyed it. I liked it. But I think I think another another thing as well. I think it suffers because of where it where it fits. So I think if it, if this had been if the fourth one had been as good as the second one, everyone would have been raving about it. Whereas yeah, the I first so. one's brilliant, and the third one because you've got like Samuel L. Jackson, and oh, Jeremy Irons. Um, great you've got cast, yeah. you've got a lot. Of, yeah, the cast is great. The story's great. Um, I love. Well, I don't like the fact he's not with Holly, but the whole John McClane he'd be just hung over bits all the way through the film. Um, yeah, it is. It's like a fascinating way to look at it, and and it does do. And that third film is great. So I think it, and the motives make sense in the third. The thing is, one. the thing is as well with it. What they've done is classic because they made each because it, what it should be. Because normally you get with films, the first one's always the best, the second one's not as good, and the third one's just like grabbing at straws. But the thing with the Die Hard films, the first one was good, second one was better, and the third one was off the chain. I think they did that trilogy really, really well. Yeah. And then I think fourth one was it was just a cash grab at the end of the day. The fourth one it was a decent enough film, but it was yeah. Let's get another Die Hard film. We've not done one for about twelve years. Let's yeah, do, one do, you, do you know what was quite similar in that respect? So you've got like Indiana Jones, the Raiders was brilliant. That's a show. That's a good show. I yeah. mean, I love Temple of Doom, but I think a lot of people would say it's probably the yeah. So do I. But I think it was seen as a bit too dark and a bit too. I mean, I know they've got yeah, problems with the way it looks exactly. now and anyway, whatever. And yeah, yeah, yeah. the third one, the third one, I I think I'd That's argue that was, was better. Film. I think the third one's arguably better than the first one. I mean, Connery yeah. and Harrison Ford just oh, I'm going to have to review those at some point. And, it's, and that's the thing, it's, it's the way it should be. It should be like good, better, awesome. That's how it should, you know, if you've got a trilogy, do it there. That means they're obviously learning, they're doing things, they're, they're improving each time they do it. And yeah. a lot of filmmakers struggle to do that because they're too busy trying to like have the the, the sort of uh, nostalgia of the first one. They're forgetting that yeah. it's a different time. And I think Die Hard did that quite well the way they did it. They moved the times a little bit. Not so much the second one, but definitely in the third one because they were doing different things with the bomb making and yeah. they, they, they were trying to use plots from the first one as well for obviously... Alan Rickman and his brother and all that sort of stuff. And I think that was pretty good what they did. They could, they, they, I think Die Hard with a Vengeance, the third one, is basically the first Die Hard on steroids. That's what I, that's what I think. Oh, yeah. I think a lot of the time with, with sequels as well, what they do is, especially the first the, the first sequel, if they get more than one, is they try to recapture the, like, the magic in the bottle mm. of the first one. Like Taken's a great example. The first oh, Taken yeah. came out of nowhere. I saw that in cinemas. Brilliant film. And it was, and I remember joking about it going in, being like, "Oh yeah, it's going to be like Jason Bourne's dad." And then I watched it, and it was like, "Oh my god, that was that was, yeah, lean, efficient. You know, it's not going to win any Oscars, but but who wants to? But it was amazing. Like it was, it was absolutely brilliant. And then the second one came along and was just a bit. It was, it it was ridiculous. Like figuring out, oh, but we'll find out. Was his wife yeah. in the second one, wasn't it? Got him, you know, it was it was him and his wife who or his wife who got kidnapped, and the daughter tries That's to save. It. The daughter saves them by using grenade. Uh, this is the only oh yeah, about chuck the second a, one. how far oh, away chuck you grenade, are. Yeah. How far away? Oh, whatever. Like oh, and then the third one. The third one. I've never watched that one. They're built up to be really good, and they've got Forrest Whitaker as. Wait, well, basically, uh, he gets. It's not. It was in all in all the trailers, so it's not a spoiler. But basically, his wife gets killed by somebody trying to frame him. Uh, trying to frame Liam Neeson's character, and he has to go on the run. And the guy trying to track him down is Forrest Whitaker. And you can see when you watch it, it's trying to do like the fugitive. Yeah. And they've got actors that uh, Lee, Liam Neeson can act, Forrest Whitaker can act, but it just feels like a lot was left on the cutting room floor. Like, and they're, they're trying mm. to do these things to make them really, the character's really unique, and it just comes across as like a bit weak and a bit kind of cheap. Like they've got Forrest Whitaker playing with like an elastic band around his wrist, and. You, in other films, they might give you an explanation for that. And in this, it's kind of like, I'll just twiddle that. That's a kind of, That makes you look like you're a good... And it's just like, nah. <laughs> like, it was just... It was shit. I don't know. It, yeah, it was just forgettable. And same with John Wick. First one, yeah, decent standalone film. And then you have to go and drag them out for however many films. And you think, oh... There's going to be another gonna... one as well, isn't there? There's going to be another one. Is it? Oh, oh you've not I... seen the end of the third one? No. You get, oh, oh you've not seen the third... I haven't seen the second one either. I don't want to. The, the second one's pretty decent to me. The first one was good. The second one's all right. I think there's a third one. I think they've opened it up. 
that Parabellum uh, or something it's called. Yeah, Parabellum, and it's they've opened it up for another one. Um, mm. because yeah, that's what happened. So it's it's third one's pretty decent. Um but I, again, it's exactly the same. It's you're used to it. It's the same thing. Same what I would probably say about the, the taken films. You come out with something different, it's a new IP, so they're coming out with something different. So yeah, it's great. But then try to do that again and try to do it. Nobody's going to be excited about it because they've seen it in the first one already. So they're not going to be excited. Yes, John Wick, he just runs about shooting the living crap out of someone. You can do that for how many films, but nobody's going to be excited about it. And the third one, they are for the first one because they've never seen it before. They've seen all this before. They've seen what he does. We've seen what he can do. So they will get a little bit nost- they will be a little bit disappointing because you, you don't have that sort of like kind of excitement of not seeing it before. Yeah. And that's what happens in the third one as well. Yeah. I think I think the die had they came out far enough apart from each other. Yes. Like it was 1988. I mean, and you've got to think about it. You can always take a year off to make it really. So it was like 1987, 88. By the time mm. you make it and release it in 88. 1990 is when the, f- the second one comes out. The third one doesn't come out until 95. And then the fourth one doesn't come out until like 2007. And then that was it. And mm. <laughs> um, I think they came out far enough apart that they, they were able to kind of update them and come up with a pretty decent story for it. Yeah, I mean, I even, so. even even for the fourth one, I thought you got Timmy, Timothy Oliphant. I thought he was pretty good as the, as the villain in that. And you got Mackie Q in it, who I thought was pretty cool. It's great. It was great. Um, so there we go. So that is that's Die Hard 2. Die Harder. The guy yeah. who came up with the name for the film must have not been paid enough. <laughs> die Hard 2. Die Harder. Wow. Wow. You, you've got a, a degree in writing scripts and that's what you come up with a fucking title. Come on, mate. Be a bit well, better. I than mean, that. to be fair, the fourth one was Die Hard 4.0 in this country and around the world, but in America, their title was unbelievable. It was a good uh, time to die hard or some stupid. No, like no, that. no, no. It was uh, it was it was uh, live free or die hard. But that's uh, that's live free, it's, die that's hard. new. That's like New Hampshire's motto, like a part of America. So it's like a oh, really well, it? it's like a really well known quote. So it worked for America uh-huh. uh, because I bought I've got Die Hard four and then I bought uh, like a universal unrated cut, and the unrated yeah. cut is like because that was a bit of a criticism of the fourth one that there was like no swearing in it and it felt a bit did PG thirteen did didn't they? Or whatever mm. they did, and people were like, "Oh, it's not really a diehard film," but it was decent. Nah. But then the unrated one, it, it feels a lot more like it because there's just swearing everywhere. Nice. Um, so I don't know. You can see how it goes there, but um, yeah, it was a great film, and uh, thank you once again for coming on. I I really appreciate it. I really do. I ah, no problems, man. It's good fun. Good fun doing this sort of stuff. I love reviewing films. I'm a massive film buff, so I, I'm, I'm no problems at all chatting crap about films. I'd say it's great. To be fair, I mean, not only are you the first returning guest on my podcast you're also one of only actually you're the only one who doesn't review films on their podcast that I actually hey, want to. look at that um i think there's a historian i talked to but even she reviews films on um, like okay. zoo titanic so i think yeah yeah i'd say that you're yeah. the only one who does a podcast that's not about films um, my, my my show is more about talking to people and listening to the stories and talking shit about something not about films but just things in general things in general man so, so if you want to find out, it's Walk the Line podcast available all about on Spotify, Apple, uh, all this sort of stuff. Got a new website coming, so please check it out. That would be awesome. And uh, yeah, um, where can you find me? Best part is on Instagram, really, uh, at, pod, uh, at the Walk the Line podcast official on uh, on Instagram. If you want to come on the show, more than happy to uh, uh, have people come on. If you've got a cool story to tell, let me know. Have a chat. Yeah, tr- try, and, uh, try and tell them what you actually want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't come on with my last guest. He decided to talk, go down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories when I thought he was talking about his, his metal band and he went down the massive rabbit hole. Very entertaining. Let me know what you think of it, by the way, Sean. I would love to hear your feedback I will. on this. I will. I, I actually I started listening to it and, you know, it's like life and work gets in the way. Life gets in the way, mate. <laughs> yeah, life finds a way in Malcolm. Yes, it does, but sometimes it uh, there's a lot going on. Um, no, yeah, so go on over and check out Ryan's podcast. It's great. And I mean, I think this is it's a compliment, but you never know what you're going to get in the best possible way. Um, Ryan's podcast is like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. You literally do not have a clue um, like what kind of guest <laughs> is going to come. But I like that because I think sometimes like mine's going to be films and then occasionally I'll throw different things in, you know, a bit of history here and this, that and the other. Um, but yeah. with your podcast, like, you never know what like <laughs> where it's going to go, which I like, I think. Well, it's good because it's 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 different. Every guest is going to be different. They talk about random stuff. So it might be somebody might like one episode, but then not like the episode after, but then like the episode further down the line. So I mean, as I say, I've got season three. 
chat about to anyone really to be fair uh, anyone from like kind of actors actresses comedians singers songwriters up and coming bands um guys that have had really harsh stories you know and uh it's it's great i love speaking to people i love hearing what they've got to say and so, some stories are absolutely fantastic and it's some are inspiring you know some are inspirational and it's uh it's a mixture of both really it's uh entertaining and funny and uh yeah so if you like it comment it share it with your friends and let spread the word mate spread the word <laughs> <laughs> absolutely uh yeah but thank you uh to ryan for coming on and speaking of um getting getting different things filmmakers and things on looks like i've bagged um i hope anyway looks like i've bagged a, a podcast with like an independent filmmaker so I've made a, yeah so that shouldn't be too bad yeah. so i'm looking forward to that one but like you I said need to get you in touch with a few of my guys actually you need to go through scott vickers who's just messaged me actually he's uh he's a filmmaker he's been uh uh he's got controversy because he's just been denied from his manchester um uh, like a competition that he put in for his short film, which is really, really good. I'll post it on my uh, my YouTube, uh, my Instagram, so have a look at it. Oh, yeah. I'll give Scott that. some love. Give Scott some love because he's a great, he's an actor and he does a lot of training for actors and, and directors and he's releasing some films. So give him some love. Reach out to him. Follow him. See if you can get him on. He's really cool. Yeah, that sounds a great idea. I'll, I'll certainly give that a listen. And that, that's the thing with all well, the independent podcasters and independent filmmakers that, that will, if you just message people and reach out to people, and just be honest and genuine with them. A lot of the time, people will respond to that. You know, I think if you... Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but no, cheers for coming on, Ryan. And uh, we'll be back. Uh, well, uh, I'll be back. But we'll be back at some point to do Commando. Um, nice. Can't wait to do that one. And I'll be back with, be... A, with a review of A Quiet Place, the 2018 film. I finally joined everybody else and watched it um, a couple of days ago. Great film. Really enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah. Join me for that one, but yeah. thank you to Ryan for coming on again. First returning guest. Again, pleasure, Sean. No pleasure. Worries, it's been great fun. Thanks for having me on, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Um.